Hey everybody, welcome back, Devin UG, the original Grognard, sitting down here at the table, and what are we looking at today? Oh my god, is this a magazine game? I don't do those very often. Magazine game, Fire and Movement, number, what, 31? December 1982, $3. Wow. <laughs> magazine game, magazine and magazine game, 1982 for $3. That's pretty impressive. Of course, to be fair, that was like two weeks worth of allowance back in the day. I think I originally picked this up in 84, 85. And again, like a multitude of the other games that I've had over the years, I've just lost them. But uh, I decided I wanted to go ahead and get this back. And I was actually surprised I was able to find an unpunched, uncut copy, good condition. Uh, or was it Amazon? Uh, I paid considerably more than the three dollars but it was still worth it and it was kind of cool because i mean going back and looking through this is like oh my god i remember all this stuff you know from 30 plus years ago uh it's just really cool it was really cool to go through and uh flip through the magazine and see the old advertisements and like, oh my god, Victory Games are early stuff. Oh my god. So, really cool to see that. But, what are we looking at? Game actually itself is Kamikaze. Complete game in this issue. So that was kind of a unique thing. Uh, the Fire and Movement didn't do many <laughs> magazine games. Uh, in fact, honestly, this is probably about the only one that I can think of off the top of my head. Not a tough game, not a very hard game. I mean, it's four pages of rules. I mean, it's... And one page is pretty much scenarios and charts. So, you <laughs> really got three pages of rules. And what is it? Uh, it is kamikaze actions uh, in the Pacific against uh, U.S. naval forces at the end of World War II. <laughs> Again, like I said, three pages worth of rules. It's not getting that crunchy. But it still was actually a pretty damn fun game. And I'm going to apologize right now because spring has definitely sprung here in Seattle. And my allergies are killing me. And I'm resisting the urge to sneeze as often as possible. But I may be erupting in sneezes every once in a while. All right. So what was cool about Kamikaze for its day? And what I found just completely unique about it. You didn't really have a board. In fact, this almost kind of sets up like a miniatures game. You set it up on the table, and you have these four compass points. You've got north, east. Actually, I've got those backwards. I do have those back. Well, it doesn't matter. Okay, we're going to... Well, it's underneath the, 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 the sheet. I'm not going to worry about changing it out. And you've got south down here. Oh, yes, all right. I got the compass points backwards. Anyways, but basically, each of the four compass points needs to be two feet away from each other. And you have an imaginary line drawn. Let's see if you can kind of see this on the, on the southern compass point here. You've got this little star right here. And that's basically the 24 inches you measure crosswise and widthwise. And you place... You have ships, and you can kind of see I've got a couple of ships laid out, but there were there were a bunch of different ships. There were a couple of destroyer classes, Fletchers and Sumner classes. You had cruisers. You had light carriers. You know, there was what six ship cards, so 12 different ship types. And you place them inside the compass point and you can place them any way you wanted to as long as the ships were not overlapping each other they could be right next to each other but the cards could not be overlapping each other and you know the the cards were really cool the ships were really cool gave a uh, gave a little bit you know uss little dd803 fletcher class destroyer uh gave a little historical background on it and you know the damage for for hull and topside damage for the kamikazes attacking it that's, that's a destroyer of course you know you've got you've got the cleveland class cruiser which is a bit bigger and has more hit points is basically the hit tracks right here and uh this is basically how much anti-aircraft fire the ship could put out. Four slash six for long range and short range anti-aircraft fire. And another, another heavy cruiser right here. She could put out a lot of anti-aircraft fire. 
And there was uh, there was a couple carrier classes in here. Let's see if I can find. Them. Yeah. Okay. So here's the Bella Wood. And she actually had planes. She could, she could carry planes on board as well. I mean, not much in long-range anti-aircraft fire, but that's some halfway decent short-range anti-aircraft fire. It's one of the first games that I found, and again, not surprisingly from Steve Jackson Games, because Steve Jackson loved to do this with their games, even going back as far back as Ogre, uh, that you had X amount of points or X amount of aircraft that you could take and certain parameters. It was basically a build-your-own-list type of game. And out of the six scenarios, uh, you know, they they went kind of easy from like a couple destroyers with no aircraft cover all the way up to, you know, a full six carrier task force with the Japanese having close to 100 aircraft strikes and different waves. And so you had a wide variety of different types of actions you could do. Basically, what I'm doing is kind of one of the smaller actions. Because the step up was from, I'm doing the second scenario, which is basically a couple of uh, uh, Sumner class dest destroyers with some supporting U.S. aircraft. You get six Hellcats, and that's part of the uh, part of your defense force that the U.S. forces get. <clears throat> and the Japanese get like 20 strike, 20 aircraft. Of varying types that they can choose from strike aircraft for for the kamikazes um and there was a wide variety of of uh japanese planes let's see there was uh let's see dd D, D. zeros judy's francis's betty's and bacas peggy's sabers plum blossoms so you had a wide variety of late war japanese aircraft that you could choose from and the zeros could either be kamikazes or they could be fighter escort. You could choose that. And there was the option for veteran pilots in the Japanese force. Um, so it was really cool because it had, had this huge amount of replayability just because of the force selection. Um but like I said, it, we're doing a kind of a simple scenario because there were the, there were the first two starter scenarios that are just a couple destroyers, and then the third scenario you're stepping up to like six six ship group with like. 40 attacking aircraft and defending it. And I figured that'd be a little bit too long. And I just kind of wanted to give an, uh, uh, kind of the basic idea and overview how the play, how, how the flow of this game went. So, but like I said, I mean, for four pages of rules with six scenarios with uh, variable uh, unit selections, a huge amount of replayability. So what are we looking at? Well, basically the scenario we're doing is... Uh, U.S. has two Sumner-class DDs and six Hellcats on combat air patrol. Japanese have 20 planes in a single wave. You may use zero Judy Francis and or Betty Bacas. Up to 10 pilots may be veterans if the Japanese player thinks he needs them. Scenario is typical of a late war attack at Okinawa or Iwo Jima. So nothing specific, just, all right, this is kind of a, kind of a, kind of a representation of the attack. Um, so basically what happens is the Japanese player... Uh, depending on how many waves he has. In this scenario, he only has one wave. But you determine randomly, well, sort of randomly, you roll a D6, and it's either going to be from one of the four compass points the U.S. player can choose or the Japanese player can choose where the defenses come in. And basically, it's a process of moving from outside the outside the, outside of the quote-unquote board, which is the compass point, moving to long range, and then long range moving to short range, and then diving the aircraft into the... <laughs> into the ships and trying to do lots of damage. And of course the US is firing long range anti-aircraft guns and they've got their fighter cover trying to trying to knock down Japanese planes. It is it is painfully easy to shoot down Japanese kamikazes with fighters. Problem is there's never enough American fighters. Um so yeah, we're just going to basically going to jump right into this and I'm kind of going to just go over it and just, we're just going to see what we can do. Uh I used to I I played the hell out of this when I was younger with as I did a lot of the games I owned when I was younger because I was a teenager in high school and hadn't discovered girls yet. So, <laughs> so you start off, so the U.S., if they have fighter escort, they get to place their fighter escort first. And they place them at what's known as the compass area, which is outside. Is it a compass area or long range? Let's take a look. Uh, yeah, compass point. Uh, so we've got six Hellcats, <clears throat> which are good late war fighters. So we're going to put at least one 
in each of the outside compass points, but we're going to put two of them outside east and west. And you just place them out there. There's no there's no set place where you have to place them. <laughs> just outside the compass point. And like I said, this, this actually does make kind of a, it is more of a miniature system than anything else. <clears throat> this actually is, is still can occasionally be found at cons. And what guys will do is they'll take ships and they'll get like 1200 scale ships or even 600 scale ships if they really want to want a big plane area. Because since you don't move the ships any, I mean, it's just a static board. You're basically just moving the aircraft around. You know, they'll paint up and build, you know, some models of the ships, put them out there and have a whole bunch of stands for, for the aircraft and then play it that way. I, it, not that popular every once in a while. I think you can still find it. But it looks really cool when they do it. Because like I said, they, they build up the... the, the uh, the models for the ships and for the aircraft. And so it's actually pretty cool if you can find it being played at a kind. Again, three pages of rules doesn't take much to teach people how to play it. All right. So anyways, um, that's, that's the American setup. That's, uh, that's pretty much the American setup. Uh, de -de -de -de. No, we've only got one wave. Deploy ships, deploy aircraft. All right, choose direction of attack. If this is not specified in the scenario, and sometimes it's specified in the scenario, uh, roll the six side. Japanese player rolls a six sided dice. And we got a three, which is the wave attacks from the east. So if I'd have rolled a one, would have been the Japanese uh, choice. Uh, six would have been the US player's choice. And then two, three, four, five is just one of the compass points. So we're coming in from the east. And so I'm allowed to choose 20 aircraft. Uh, and I already went ahead and went, went, went with this selection. And I'm not going to put all 20 aircraft over there at the compass point because that's just, that's just a pain in the butt. But, but I've got these great, they come with these great little group markers. So, yeah, group one, group one. So instead of moving all those aircraft, we're just going to put the group one marker over there to show that that's where the entire air the entire flight is coming in at so um i should probably take a look at the counters uh, the ship the aircraft and what they what they mean so here you have a japanese zero and the f this number is their profile which is how easy or hard it is to shoot them down with anti-aircraft fire uh the lower the number the better or actually no the higher the number, the better. Um, and then this number right here is the accuracy for when it's uh, actually committing a kamikaze attack, how accurate it is. And then damage is how much damage it'll do if and when it strikes a ship. So that's that's a zero. Let's take a look at a Judy. And you'll notice her stats are just a little bit different than a zero. Zero is a little bit more accurate when it's trying to slam into a ship, when it's trying to do a kamikaze attack, but the Judy does more damage. And now let's also take a look at Francis, which is a bomber. So the profile, yeah, okay, yeah, high numbers are bad when it comes to profile. So that's how easy it is to shoot down with anti-aircraft fire. It's a slow-moving bomber. It's going to be easy to knock out. It's also very hard and maneuverable to fly, so it's going to be really hard... Well, not really hard. It's going to be harder for the plane to slam into the ship, but it does three points of damage. Now, there are other types of aircraft that I didn't choose and wasn't allowed to. They've got the Abedi bombers uh, that uh, can drop off the uh, jet-propelled uh, Baca bombs. Uh, the idiot bombs. Baca means in Japanese idiot or moron, dumbass, whatever. <laughs> and... Uh, I can't remember what the Japanese called them. Plum Blossoms, I think, or something like that. Uh, but we just called them idiot bombs because they were jet-powered suicide craft. Um, and there's other... What else is there? The Baca Bombs, the Plum Blossoms, Peggy Bombers. So you got a wide variety of aircraft to choose from. This scenario only allows you to choose from three or four. I decided not to go with the, uh, with the Bacas because they're really suck at trying to <laughs> get well let's take a look at a baka so 
Negative three, really hard to hit with anti-aircraft. On the profile, negative three on the accuracy, so they also don't hit the ships very often, but they do three points of damage. And these guys can't be engaged by fighters since they're jet powered, uh, so they fly faster than the uh, than the jet than the uh, U.S. fighters can uh, try to keep up with them. All right, so our entire wave is coming in, and basically the first turn is just the U.S. or just the Japanese planes coming into range. Uh, then basically the turn starts off. Of course, that is the only movement that the Japanese have, so that's that's all they're going to be able to do. Uh, so I'm not even going to go through the Japanese turn order. Uh, then the U.S. air movement. Now, air movement, uh, pretty simple. It, since this is all kind of area, you move, and this goes for applies to the Americans as well as the Japanese, you move from either compass point to long range or from a compass point to an adjacent compass point, i.e. from south to east, south to west, north to you know, what, yada, yada, yada. Uh, or you can move from a long range to an adjacent short range. I'm not going to get into that really too much because uh, adjacency is kind of uh, abstract uh, since this is kind of, since this isn't really a measured game as long as you draw an imaginary line from the point that's on the compass point so from here to the middle of the ship that you're moving to so if you wanted to move say we're in this long range and wanted to move to the short range of that as long as there's no ships in between you blocking you then you can do that now if for some reason you know it was set up like this and you wanted to move from this compass point to the short range of this one, you couldn't because you're flying over the short range of the mat of this ship. So you'd have to stop here first and then the next turn after that. So ship placement actually does make a difference in this game for an abstract area system, as it were. Uh, but and again, we've only got two ships out there. It's not really going to be interfering too much. So, But what we're going to do is we're going to take this guy. And so since this is now the U.S. mover, we're going to go from this compass point. And we're going to go to that compass point, And we're going to take the Wildcat at the north comp comp compass point. Move it to the east compass point. <coughs> and the two fighters over here are going to pull in. And they're going to go to the long range area. So that's 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 moving in a nutshell. It's basically one area to the next area, to an adjacent area. Simple and easy. But now, now that we've done that, we have uh, the dogfight phase. And oh my, we're going to have dogfights. Because we've got Hellcats with a whole bunch of <laughs> Japanese kamikazes. And this is real easy. Yeah. Again, like I said, this three pages of rules is not going to be that much deep to it. You just, U.S. player takes his fighters and basically just assigns them to who he wants to attack. And I'll take a look at... Right here. So we got a... So as you can see, we've got four fighters against 20 incoming aircraft. I'm not going to be able to stop them all with fighters. But we'll do what we can. So... U.S. always has the option of what they want to shoot down first. And combat is instantaneous. It's none of this. Combat is simultaneous, so damage is done at the... No, it's it's flat out done right as the dice are thrown. Now, if you notice, also, I've got a bunch of zeros. The zeros have two options. They can come in as either a kamikaze or they can come in as a fighter support. The U.S. player doesn't know what loadout the zero is going to be until they're in the same area uh, that the that the zeros are at. I think it's the. I think the kamikaze versions had the bomb had a couple bombs attached to it, and the fighters didn't. That's how they were able to tell which were fighter escorts and which were which were kamikazes. Uh, in this case, I could have taken the zeros as either. I just decided now nah, we're just going to go ahead and keep them all as kamikaze planes. So the U.S. player has to decide who he wants to go after. Um, and you know what? I think what they're going to do. They're going to go after the Judys. I'm not too worried about going after the Francis's. The Francis's are slow. Anti-aircraft fire has got a good chance of knocking them out. But the Judys, they can do some damage. 
but you know they're about as easy to shoot down uh, as the zero is with anti-aircraft fire. So we're gonna go with uh, we're gonna go with we're gonna take and put one on four of the different duties. <sighs> There's only a couple charts. <laughs> So here's the aircraft characteristics right here, which is basically everything that's printed on the counter. And then you've got the dogfight chart right here. And it's basically a matter of taking what you're shooting at and what the target is, cross-referencing, and that's what you need on a six or plus to hit. So we've got Hellcats, and we're going after a Kamikaze, so we need a two plus to hit them on a single six-sided dice. Now, if the now if I had assigned veterans. They did needed a three plus. Escort zeros are a three plus, and escort with a veteran pilot is a four plus. Pretty easy. And if you look conversely, <laughs> escort zeros have a really hard time to shoot. So yeah, the U.S. planes are going to shoot down the Japanese planes in droves because one hit on a Japanese plane will just flat out destroy it. Uh, at least in a dogfight. The Japanese, however, if they do manage to get hit, it only wounds them and flips them over. So that's another reason why I really didn't want to worry about bringing along any escorts with me. The chances of me sh actually shooting down very many Wildcats or Hellcats, not real good. <laughs> Although it does get a little bit better if the, if, the, if the Escort Zero is a veteran or the target is damaged. Now you don't take the, you don't take the, if, if the attacker is a veteran, all U.S. pilots are considered veteran pilots. That's already factored into this chart. So when, you, when you're the U.S., what you're looking at is that's just what you need. So we got four dice that we're going to be, four different duties we're going to be attacking. And we need a two plus. So let's just go ahead. First one, yep, shot down. Second one, shot down. Third one, shot down. And fourth one, shot down. So we lost four duties in that. <laughs> So yeah, the escorts are going to be blowing Japanese aircraft out of the sky. All right, so after that's done, then the Japanese have their chance to do their dogfights. But again, that only happens if they have zeros that are in the escort mode. And I don't have any escorts, zeros in the escort mode. So that's basically going to be the it for the dog. The, 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 it's going to be the end of the dogfight phase, which really basically ends the turn. Because now it's, well, after that is uh, anti-aircraft fire phase. But we're at a compass point, and compass point is outside of uh, anti-aircraft range. There's only short range and long range for anti-aircraft fire. You can't fire at the compass. So there's no anti-aircraft fire, and the next last phase is kamikaze attacks, but we got no Japanese planes in positions to attack uh, kamikazes or two kamikaze, and those that, that would be indicated if there are any uh, Japanese aircraft in the short range area. area. Uh, so that's basically it for turn one. Then you go around, start of the turn again, J uh, aircraft movement phase, Japanese. So basically the Japanese, since they're all in one big group and we're going to keep them in one big group, you can only move one adjacent to adjacent. They're going to move from compass range to the long range. Now the U.S. are going to follow suit. That's their movement. So they are also going to continue their... Their fighters are going to continue to follow and continue to harass the Japanese fighters or Japanese kamikazes. Um, <clears throat> these guys here, I can move to an adjacent long range. I can move back out to a compass or I can move to a short range because there's, drawing the imaginary line, I can move to the adjacent short range because I'm not crossing uh, another ship. So, you know what? Let's go ahead and move one over the uh, Mannert, and let's put one over the Maddox. So we put them in the short range box just to indicate that they're at the short range. Could be good, could be bad, because if anti-aircraft fire is fired at an area where there's U.S. planes at, it could hit the U.S. planes. Yeah, don't want that to happen. Anyway, so that's it for movement. Uh... Then it's dogfight phase. It's uh, U.S. attacks. They get theirs, so they've got four aircraft, uh, or four, yeah, four aircraft that can light up whatever I've got. So this time, this time they're going to go after zeros. They're going to try to shoot down four zeros. So again, we're just going one, two, three, four. So the first two. Oh, oh, one didn't get shot down. <laughs> Look at that. 
one did and then three four okay so three zeros got shot down so we just grab three zeros and take them off put them in the dead pile yeah that the, the, the aircraft die in droves <laughs> that's no getting around it um now we've got anti-aircraft phase now they're no longer, the Japanese aircraft are no longer at the compass point. They're at a long range. Short range is basically either an adjacent short range, i.e. ship to ship, or your own. You can fire short range at your own, <laughs> at the aircraft that are attacking you. So at the long range, only long range anti-aircraft fire can, can take effect. And if we take a look... We've got these counters. I don't really like how this design was done because you got the hull side, hull damage and top side damage over the hit boxes, but it covers up the long range. It co covers up the anti-aircraft fire. Not a real fan of it, but you know, whatever. Uh, so the first number is long range anti-aircraft fire. Second number is a short range anti-aircraft fire. Basically how many dice you get to roll. Um, so basically each crew, each of these destroyers, since they're sister ships, will have two long range and three short range each. So each of them have got two long range. I could throw four long range anti-aircraft fire at them. Now, the problem is there are U.S. planes in that compass or in that area that they can be hit. Now let's take a look what happens when we're shooting uh at your when you're shooting anti-aircraft okay da, 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 da. Uh, da, 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 da. okay if if fire is directed into an area containing u.s planes half of the anti-aircraft markers rounded down must be placed on u.s planes until each plane has one marker assigned to it any further markers may then be assigned to japanese planes if there are any in the area if the only plane in the area is a single u.s plane though it must receive both anti-aircraft markers so basically what that's saying is i, I I'll, I'll have four long-range shots two of them are going to have to go against the u.s planes and the other two can go against the japanese uh, the attacking japanese aircraft you know what? Let's do it. And just because we're just because we want to show what happens, let's go ahead and do that. Now we've got these counters here. Bunch of these counters. If I grab them, I laminated these things before I cut them, so they're a little bit slick. You've got these counters. You've got LR, which is for long range, and you've got SR, which is for short range. You just grab these counters to mark. All right, so since I've got four long-range anti-aircraft shots, I grab four long-range markers, and I assign them however I want. Now, you got to remember, since I'm firing into a zone that has U.S. aircraft in it, half of these shots are going to have to be assigned to U.S. aircraft. So I'm going to take two of the long-range shots, and I'm just going to put them next to a couple of the American aircraft. Now I'm going to take these two other long-range shots, and I'm going to go ahead, and we'll go after the Francis's. We'll, go, we'll put a couple shots after those slow-moving bombers. All right, so what does that mean? We've got those. Now we have to roll the damage for it. And how does that work? Well, we've got anti-aircraft fire. Basically, for every, every counter that is on a ship, short-range or long-range, you roll 2d6. And then you have some modifiers. If a long-range gun firing at short-range two ones that explodes. In other words, if you're using your five inch guns and firing at short range, uh, you could do damage to your own ship. And then modifiers, it's a minus one for firing into a long range, uh, plus one if the target is damaged, and then a plus or minus for the target profile from table A, which is up here. And again, this is all the stats that are on the counters. So let's go ahead and start off. We're shooting at the US aircraft. And let's, first of all, let's take a look at their anti-aircraft profile. Really, the only number on a U.S. aircraft is the profile number because they don't need an accuracy. They don't need damage because they're not doing kamikaze attacks. So it is a negative three. So you can shoot at your own stuff. You're trying to avoid it. But, you know, every once in a while, some stray shells are probably going to kind of make connections. So it's a negative three right off the top that you're rolling on the 2D6. So it's a minus three, and then it's another minus one for firing into long range. So we're looking at a minus four. So let's take a look at the anti-aircraft table. Is it is it even worth firing at? 
because the best you can roll is obviously a 12. Subtract four from that is going to be an eight, which is either going to be a damage. So basically the only way I can hurt one of those wildcats with anti-aircraft fire <clears throat> at this range is either by rolling 11 or 12 and it'll just damage it. All right, well, that seems easy enough. So let's go ahead and roll for the first one. Subtracting four from the dice roll. Uh, we got up, of course. <laughs> We got an 11. Minus 4 is a 7, which damages. And so basically, when you have a damaged aircraft, you just take the normal side and you flip it over. And it has a slight color, di slight coloring difference. The, the background is kind of a lighter blue or lighter red for the Japanese. And you got this smoke coming from it. You know, the stats don't change much. So we got one long range fire that wounded one of the American uh fighters and so let's go for the other one again remembering to subtract four that's a nine that's not going to be anything yay nine uh so now over here with the francis now the francis as i kind of mentioned earlier are big lumbering bombers so oh, with you freaking autofocus I don't know why it does this i think sometimes it's the light so their target profile is a two so the U.S. player gets to add two to its dice roll because they're easier to try to shoot down. So it's plus two for shooting at the Francis, but a minus one for long range. So they get a net total of plus one. So the first roll is going to be a four, which is going to be a five. Add the plus one is going to be a six. And it is a miss. See that right there? Six, miss. And for the second one... Is going to be a six plus one is going to be seven. Now that seven is a damaged. So we just take the Francis and flip it over to its other side. Now the stats don't change really on it. It's anti-aircraft profile, it's accuracy, and it's uh, uh, damage don't change any. But, you know... At least with anti-aircraft fire, you can kind of whittle them down. Fighters, when they when they hit a target, it just flat out destroys it. Anti-aircraft guns do inflict a casual or inflict <laughs> casualty, inflict a step loss, damage the aircraft, so you flip it over. And that would be anti-aircraft. And next we would go into kamikaze phase, but we have no Japanese aircraft at the short range of any of the ships. So that's basically it. So that's two turns down. <laughs> And so we go around back again. All right, and back around to the top. Aircraft movement phase, Japanese air movement. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of the group markers because at this point we do want to move into adjacent uh, adjacent short range uh, areas. And again, since we really don't have... Uh, well, actually... Well, we're going to move that forward a little bit. The intent was not to, to block. But basically, uh, since we're moving from here and we're trying to move to an adjacent short range, as long as we're not flying over a, a ship card to get to a ship, you, you can do that. So basically, these two ships, the way they're set up, the intent was that from the compass point indicator to the center of the enemy sh or the uh, american ship we're not crossing over any enemy card or any enemy any 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 ship cards i can talk to that honestly that's the antihistamine i took earlier for my eyes isn't making me a bit loopy but anyways um so what we're going to do now is we're going to break up the aircraft because we're going to we don't want all the aircraft to go to one ship basically because only four aircraft are can attempt to kamikaze a turn. So we want to break it up a little bit. Let's see how many Francis we got. One, two, three, four. Okay, so we've got four Francis's. So let's put four Francis's on each one. We'll put two Judy's, and the other one will get three zeros. And so basically, you just take the aircraft and place them in the short range area. Break this up a little bit by aircraft type. The same up here. 
Oops, those are the four Francis's. Oh yeah, we're gonna put, uh, come back here. Slick laminated counters, I can't keep my fingers on them. These are originally done on cardstock. So it's not like the counters were that flimsy to begin with. And the ships were originally done with uh, uh, magazine paper. So they were really, really, really flimsy. So let's go ahead and take the zeros from here. Put them over here like so. All right, so that's the Japanese movement phase. Now, the U.S. movement phase. Now, the question is, do I want to follow my aircraft in and try to get some anti-aircraft or get some airstrikes on before the Japanese planes crash into my ships? But I'll have to weather some anti-aircraft fire. You know, I think I think it's worth it. What I will do is I the the wounded aircraft isn't going to go in because it takes another anti-aircraft hit. It's going to die. So we're going to put wildcat there put another wildcat there or hellcat and then have the other hellcat come over here to give anti-aircraft support uh or fighter support and then basically that's that that's movement and then we go right into a dogfight phase which is uh the u.s they get theirs first we've got two here i'm gonna go after uh the two judies so Again, looking at our chart from earlier, I miss on a one. Uh, so, yep, both Judy's get shot down. Burka, 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 burka. And really, you, you may think that that's a little bit harsh, but take a look at the actual kamikaze stats. The planes died in just absolute droves. All right, and then up here, we've got three zeros. So we've got three Hellcats against three zeros. Again, we're going to miss on a one. So, turka, 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 turka. And three zeros go down. Uh, then would be the Japanese uh, dogfight phase, but again, we don't well, we don't have any zeros left. Uh, we didn't have any zeros that were escort capable anyways. All right, now we're getting into uh, dogfight, or that was dogfights, uh, anti-aircraft phase. Well, since both ships are going to are receiving attacks, both ships are going to be firing uh, their entire allotment at the supporting or at the at the attacking aircraft. And so, basically, they've got five dice and only four targets here, and I believe it's only four targets there as well. Now, you got to remember, anti aircraft only will reduce them one step. <laughs> Won't flat out kill them. So let's take a look at the numbers here. Let's run the numbers. And these are all France's bombers. So it's going to be a straight up plus two to the dice roll to begin with. Well, I can't say that the anti-aircraft is either damaged or eliminated. That's, that was kind of a little bit erroneous when I was saying that uh, it, damage will only flip it over. Eliminate, of course, will eliminate it. All right, so we don't have the minus one for firing into long-range aircraft, even though we're using long-range anti-aircraft guns. But we do have to roll, watch it. If we roll a two with those long-range guns, then we do we do a point of damage to ourselves. Uh, but we're not firing into a long-range area, so we don't have that minus one anymore. However, we are firing into an area that has our own ships in it, or our own aircraft in it, so half the fire is going to go to our own aircraft. I could grab the counters. I'm not going to worry about it. Uh, it doesn't say if you round up or round down. I think it's going to be round down. Or round, yeah, round, round, yeah, round down. So we've got five, basically two long range and three short range, which is going to be five. So two... Anti-aircraft strikes are going to go on, um, uh, freaking focus. Two of the strikes are going to go on, uh, two of the anti-aircraft strikes are going to go on the Hellcats, and then the remaining three will go on the Francis's. So let's do the uh, U.S. stuff first. We'll do the, we'll, we'll do the long range with this, because this one, this one, we got to, we got to keep an eye out if we roll the two. Now, again, the Hellcats have a minus three on their profile, so it's a minus three on the dice roll. So again, pretty much, uh, 10, 11, or 12 is really the only thing that's going to hurt one of the fighters. 
So, uh, but again, since this is long range fire, we also need to keep an eye out for a double or two. So let's go ahead. I saw that one. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Uh, four, so that's gonna be a miss on the first one. And uh, five, again, minus three is gonna be a miss on the second one. Um, now, uh, for the three that are going against the Francis's, their profile is a plus two, so we get a plus two to each of the dice rolls. So we're just going first one, second one, third one. So first one is going to be a seven, eight, nine, ten, which is going to be an eliminated. The second one is going to be four, five, six, seven, which is going to be a damaged. Not that that's going to make too much of a difference. And the third one is going to be a 10, 11, 12, which is going to be destroyed. All right, so not bad we still got a couple aircraft that are gonna make it in now up there we're gonna have two wildcats so again let's do the long range fire on them uh nine eight seven six is gonna be nothing and the second one is four minus three is gonna be nothing and then the first three uh, we'll do the uh we'll do the first one on the damaged francis first so this is against the damaged <laughs> 8, 9, 10, which is a flat-out eliminated. The second Francis, 9, 10, 11, which is an eliminated. And 8, 9, 10, which is an eliminated. Well, there you go. There you go. That's it for the anti-aircraft phase. So, yeah, don't, don't be worried about throwing anti-aircraft. Now, it kind of does play into effect in the larger scenarios, uh, when the damaged fighters carry over from turn to turn, uh, you kind of got to start watching out and keeping an eye on that because then the damaged fighters in the follow-up waves could start to get destroyed. You're not going to see a lot of destroyed American planes, but over like three, four, five waves attacking, it's going gonna, it's gonna to start to take its toll. And that's victory points. Most of the time, the Japanese are going to lose, but eh, you know, whatever. We're not going to we're not going to worry about that. We're just worrying about trying to slam planes into <laughs> into ships. All right, so that was that was the anti aircraft phase. Now it's now it's the uh, kamikaze phase. And again, four aircraft per short range can make a strike on an American ship. And then you have the kamikaze table. Real easy. Roll two d six. Modified by minus one if the kamikaze is damaged, plus one if it's a veteran pilot, plus or minus for the aircraft accuracy, and then plus one if the target is a carrier. Because carriers are big, it's easier to hit them than it is to hit a destroyer. But, so let's take a look, and we got to remember, the accuracy is that number right there. It's minus one. So we're looking at a minus one on the dice roll, and... A minus, further minus one if the kamikaze is damaged. So we've got one comp damaged kamikaze, one damaged uh, uh, Francis. So we'll go this one first. So she's going to be a minus two on the dice roll. Eight, seven, six is going to be a miss. And this Francis is going to be a minus one because of her accuracy. Is going to be seven, six is going to be nothing. And then the other Francis up there is going to be a minus one, is going to be a three, <laughs> minus one's a two. All right, so yeah, that's it. That, that, that's game over. Um, obviously, Japanese aircraft are destroyed as soon as they uh, do a kamikaze attack. But that's it. That's 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 kamikaze in a nutshell. I mean, the, the bigger scenarios do get a little bit more involved because you do have a lot more aircraft that you can play with and you can bring them in in multiple waves and any aircraft, any U.S. aircraft that are up have to land on a carrier between, you know, they can only, they, they can be, they can be up for one wave, down for one wave. So if you put all your aircraft up for one wave, then they've all got to come down to refuel so you'll have nothing on the next wave. So you got to split up your fighter defense. Um, you got to preserve your, your, your wound or your wounded, <laughs> your injured, your injured. Oh my God, this is not not dandy. Your damaged aircraft, I chalk it up to the antihistamines, the damaged aircraft, um, got to husband those, but, and, you know, again, you're going to be throwing a lot more anti-aircraft fire, but you're going to have a lot larger waves in the bigger scenarios. You're going to have, it's like, uh, scenario six has two Sumner class, two light cruisers, uh, anti-aircraft cruiser, uh, the carrier Bella Wood plus 24 Hel Hellcats, and the Japanese have 70 planes in four waves.
So, you know, they can get kind of big. So, but that is basically uh, the down and dirty, the uh, how to play this this quick little game. Like I said, it's enjoyable. It's a filler game. It's kind of a beer and pretzels game. But in my opinion, it's got a little bit of crunch to it because you are making decisions on what aircraft you're you're going to be bringing in, and you know how how you're going to stack up your attacks. Um, Japanese aren't going to win that often. <laughs> it, it, I mean, it really takes. I mean. It's it is really easy to shoot down Japanese aircraft, and then it is really hard to, for the Japanese uh, kamikazes to actually hit their targets. But again, a lot of replayability, a lot of variability, a lot of fun, and I don't know. There might be a link to the PDF in the comment section. I don't know. Maybe go take a look. Possibly. <sighs> questions, comments, concerns, complaints, criticisms in the comment section below. And I'll talk to everybody later. See ya!